Is your fantasy self toxic? Find out what a fantasy self is and 10 fantasy self items that you can declutter right now for a happier and more authentic you. What's up fam and welcome back to my channel. My name is Marissa and I am a recovering hoarder turned minimalist mom. Here at my channel, I share videos about minimalism, how to declutter your home and financial minimalism. So if any of that sounds good to you, I would love it if you would exert a minimalist amount of effort to hit that like button down below and maybe consider subscribing to my channel to join our minimalist family if you're looking for more ways on how to declutter your home and make minimalism work for you in your life right now. Today I'm sharing this video as part of a mini series that I'm doing the entire month of May and it's going to be called Minimalism and Mental Health. If you didn't know, May is National Mental Health Awareness Month. It's a time to raise awareness about mental health or behavioral issues and to help reduce the stigma that so many of us with mental health struggles experience in our daily lives. As someone who experienced multiple devastating losses and traumas, from her early childhood on, mental health is a topic that is near and dear to my heart. There's a quote that I found on my minimalist journey that I love and it goes, the wound is the place the light enters. Over time, I have come to accept that the things that made me the way that I am will never truly go away. Okay, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. <sighs> They are still there, like the scars of old wounds inside of me, but part of the healing process for me has been sharing this minimalist journey with you, which brings us to the fantasy self. What is a fantasy self? And why is it a good idea to declutter fantasy self items? For good or bad, most of us have things that we would like to change about ourselves. It could be our financial situation. It could be our appearance. It could be the relationship that we have with ourselves and the people around us. A fantasy self is a highly idealized image that you have of yourself, but also how you want others to perceive you as. A lot of times people purchase items that feed into this desire to achieve their fantasy self that they have up on this pedestal, but they end up just not using them and they're stuck in a corner or stuffed in drawers and they just end up taking up space in our homes and our lives and our mind and weighing us down from achieving real true happiness and being our true selves, which can cause a lot of negative emotions like guilt, anxiety, etc. Now, I am not saying that it is impossible to learn new skills or to try to become a better version of yourself. But if you have things laying around your home that you haven't used or haven't touched in six months, a year, two years, five years, 10 years, in my case, 30 years. If you have fantasy self items like this laying around your home, letting them go can be really rewarding and healing and it can help you get in better touch with your most authentic self. The first item on this list is clothing. How many times have you gone out and purchased an item of clothing or a pair of shoes because someone told you or you saw some model wearing it or you read in a magazine that this was the thing to have. This is the thing that's going to give you confidence, make your waist look tiny, raise your self-esteem, and just make you feel like your most perfect self walking around. I remember one time I read a magazine article that was talking about you shouldn't have the same kinds of fabrics in your wardrobe. You needed to mix them up. So then I went out and I tried to buy some like poly polyester blouses and silk blouses, anything besides cotton and jersey, which was what like my entire wardrobe was. And guess what? I didn't feel comfortable in those fabrics and I ended up not wearing those things because I didn't feel comfortable. This is so hard to admit. I have also thrifted items that I knew were too small because I told myself that someday I was gonna be back to my ideal weight my ideal waist size, and I was going to fit into those things. And guess what? I thrifted those things like two, three, five years ago, and I never ever did fit into those things. It's okay to have goals for yourself if you're trying to reach a certain weight, but maybe give yourself a time limit that if you haven't reached it in a set amount of time, say six months to a year, keep it healthy and attainable, please, then maybe consider letting those items go. 
The next item on this list is exercise equipment and clothing. I am also very guilty of this. I talked about this in my video at the beginning of the year that I had been overeating because I struggle with binge eating. I have struggled with binge eating in the past and I have gained over 15 pounds now in quarantine and I was hoping to lose some weight, but instead of going out and buying clothing saying, hey, if I have clothing that's cute, I'm gonna feel more like working out. I know in the past that that didn't work and instead I'm trying to instill good workout routine habits right now and if I do that, I could consider rewarding myself in the future with you know, nice exercise clothing. As far as exercise equipment, treadmills, ellipticals, bands, weights, all of those things that you purchase with the best of intentions and then they just end up taking space in your home and then you feel guilty about not using them. When you're trying to instill good health and fitness habits, it's important to find things that fit into your life and that you enjoy doing because if you don't enjoy doing it, you're not gonna do it. So exercise equipment and clothing is a big fantasy self item that you can declutter right now. The next item on our list is books. Books that you bought and you haven't read, books that you read halfway and you stopped because you just weren't feeling good about the book, books that you read but you'll probably never read again because you didn't enjoy it or it didn't resonate with you or you got everything that you needed out of that book already. There's a great quote by Marie Kondo about books and you know what, I'm just, I'm gonna grab my book really quick and see if I can find it, hold on. There's a great quote by Marie Kondo in her book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. If you missed your chance to read a particular book, even if it was recommended to you or it's one you've been intending to read for ages, this is your chance to let it go. You may have wanted to read it when you bought it, but if you haven't read it by now, the book's purpose was to teach you that you didn't need it. There's no need to finish reading books that you only got halfway through. Their purpose was to be read halfway. So get rid of all those unread books. It will be better for you to read a book that really grabs you right now than one that you left to gather dust for years. Wow, Marie Kondo calling me out here. I used to consider myself a book person and I had years and years and years of books, including college textbooks that I carried around in boxes from place to place to place for over 10 years without cracking them open a single time. And I had so much emotional guilt, financial guilt once I finally decided to declutter them, but it was immensely healing and cathartic to finally let those items go. The next item on our fantasy self item list is kitchen appliances and cookbooks. I remember when Instant Pots were the hot thing and everyone was raving about Instant Pots, so I went and I got an Instant Pot and I cooked exactly one dish in it, which you can still find on my blog, Chinese oxtail soup, and then I just never used it again because I didn't enjoy using it. It was just too... It was just too ambiguous for me. The cooking times and figuring things out, you can't see what's inside, and I realized that I like cooking with traditional cooking methods better. I have appliances that I enjoy. I use my rice cooker a lot, but I don't have things like a slow cooker or an Instant Pot. Some people love their Instant Pots and that's okay, but it's important to find the things that work for you and fit into your life. How many cookbooks or appliances or other things have you purchased with the best of intentions in your home, but then you end up not using them and they're just taking up space? So if your fantasy self is a master chef, but you can barely grill a grilled cheese sandwich, then maybe it's time to look at what works for your current self in your kitchen right now. The next item is social media fantasy self, and this one is huge. Social media can be very toxic. We see other people leading these amazing lives, taking these amazing pictures, traveling to amazing places, and we might start to feel bad about ourselves because we're not doing those things. But what we have to remember is that social media is real, but it isn't reality. Even minimalism as it's presented on YouTube, the way that people think about minimalism is people in neutral clothing, sitting in an empty room with a white wall, 
no furniture, and that's just not really what minimalism is. If you ever find yourself following someone who makes you feel bad about yourself, that you are comparing yourself against them and coming up short, what you should do is just unfollow that person and protect your happiness. Because as Teddy Roosevelt says, comparison is the thief of joy. The next item on this list of fantasy self items is sentimental items. We may look back on what we were like in the past, who we were in the past, who we were with in the past, and fondly remember those times and hold on to things that remind us of those times. But maybe they aren't something that we are using or that make us happy when we look at them now. So if you're holding on to something from the past just because it made you happy then, but it's not something that fits your current lifestyle or that makes you happy that you use and display on a daily basis right now, maybe you can consider letting it go. And I have an entire video on how to declutter sentimental items, how I decluttered 30 years of emotional hoarding following the deaths of my parents and multiple friends and family members. So believe me when I say, that letting go of sentimental items can be extremely difficult, but it can be also extremely rewarding and cathartic and healing to finally let go. The next item on this list is subscriptions and memberships. The thing that comes to my mind when I'm thinking about this is specifically gym memberships, because a lot of us at the beginning of the year will go out and buy gym memberships with all the good intentions in the world. And maybe we go a few times at the beginning of the year, but then we fall off the wagon and we just don't feel like going later. Or it could be something like subscription boxes, which have gotten pretty popular in recent years. Maybe you're not at the point in your life where you have the time or the money to travel around Europe, but you thought, hey, I could pretend like I was going on a European wine tour and order this wine subscription box that delivers wine to me every month. But then you find that you don't really enjoy the wines that they're picking for you and it just feels like a waste of money, but then you feel guilty about wasting the money. Take some time to think about what subscriptions and memberships that you are currently enrolled in right now. Write them down if you want to and see what you actually use and what you could consider getting rid of. Hobby and craft supplies. Oh, I am so guilty of this. Are you a knitter? Did you snowboard, ski? ice skate? Did you have a hobby of watercolor or calligraphy, bullet journaling, something that you loved in the past or bought meaning to try, but then you just don't enjoy anymore or you never got around to using? Take a look at your hobby and craft supplies and see if there's anything in there that's taking up space that you just don't need anymore. A lot of times our fantasy self is rooted in outward appearances. And so it makes sense that makeup, hair care, and skincare would be a big part of that. Uh, curling irons, straighteners, hair care products like hairsprays, gels, jade rollers, or brushes for your cellulite or massagers. All of these things that promise us that we have to use them to feel better about ourselves and maybe we use them one or two times, but for some reason they just don't work or we don't enjoy using them or they don't solve the problem. You don't see any difference. It's okay to let these items go and say, hey, maybe I used this in the past and I enjoyed it, but it's not who I am now or this isn't something that seems to make a difference. It's not effective. Just take a look at what you're actually using under your makeup, hair, and skincare items and let the items go if they don't fit into what the current you likes to use. And the final item on this list is technology. Technology, like social media, is one of those more insidious fantasy self items. And it has the ability to make our lives extremely awesome and convenient. And it also has the power to make us miserable depending on how we use it. Let's say that you're someone who suffers from FOMO, which is fear of missing out. And so every time you hear your phone buzz or the screen lights up, you instantly grab it to check because you don't wanna miss anything that's happening. When you're bored, you end up scrolling for hours, just mindlessly refreshing over and over again to see what's going on in the news and in your friends' lives. And it's like an endless hamster wheel. I run and I run and I run and I run and I get out and I've gone nowhere. Oh, no. 
Is there anything that you could declutter because you're not using it or because it makes you feel bad about yourself? A lot of times we pay so much attention to the physical things around us that we forget about our digital spaces. So take a look at the technology that you're surrounding yourself with and think of where can I trim the fat? Were you surprised by any of these fantasy self items? Do me a favor, go down to the comment section and drop me one emoji that represents a fantasy self item that you have in your home that you know you should get rid of that's just taking up space and you're not using it. Let's see what kind of emojis we get, shall we? I'll drop mine below too. I hope that you enjoyed this list of fantasy self items that you can declutter right now to be your most authentic and happiest version of you. Remember, all of these things will take time, but again, it's an immensely rewarding process once you finally can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And you don't need these things taking up space in your home or your mind rent-free anymore. If you haven't already, I would appreciate it if you would hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing to my channel to join our minimalist family because we would love to see you around again soon. All right, take care, bye-bye.